some of the bushcrafters out there, you'll be familiar with this, it's about always being prepared. You might find yourself in these sort of like conditions after you've just experienced two months worth of sun. This little trick for today is how to start a fire in the pouring down rain when you've basically got wet wood and uh, as you can see, little branches like so, which usually help you uh, to create a fire, are all absolutely soaking wet through. So with just a couple of ingredients for the fire or the fire making, watch this and you might see something you've not seen before. Oh, man. When it's as wet as it is, one man is going to have to try to get a fire going and pull out all the stops here. So, So let's see how we fare with some of the material that we've got here available, some of the timber. So we've got the town. Not quite traditional, but one's got to do what one can in these type of situations. Let's just up a little bit. So we've got a plan. Now I've just got to feed it. Dry some of this. There we go. These little branches are all wet. With the makeup pads and for good measure, but trolling block. The aim here is just to heat this wet, the uh, heat the wet uh, little branches up, and um, that should burn some of the, um, the heat should evaporate some of the water that's on, and then we'll start to add to it. We're limited really, but dry side down. I want this to be a control fire, so. I don't want it, I don't want it, the flame to rise high. And then what I'm going to do is, I'm going to start to put some bricks around some of the pebbles. There's plenty of oxygen getting to this fire, but what we've got there is all the smoke from the moisture. But we've established a fire, that's good. That's going to be uh, rocking and rolling that now. Just need to keep on feeding it. And keeping it at 
a level where it's right under the tarp this so we want to keep it at a level where it's not going to burn much higher than maybe a foot and a half two foot so i'll continue chopping these uh, little logs into finer pieces and keep on feeding the fire until we've got some coals established So I can uh, take it easy a little bit then. Ooh, baby, that's smoking. Smoking. Right, we'll let that settle for a little bit now. Give you a little bit of a view of the situation, guys. Camp view, everything's under the tarp with Badgie there, keeping nice and uh, dry and warm. So, I'll start to put some stones around that, then, and then we can cook off it and uh, just keep it at a nice level. Let's not, get, let's not get carried away. Big isn't always better. I better move the uh, axe handle there, aren't I? Ooh, baby. That's it. Sort of that. Sort of that. Mickey's got a decent pile of wood there. All nice. T taking it out of the wet weather. He's de barked some of it and uh, de mossed it using the back of the silky saw there, doing a fine job. I've got some water on the boil and uh, it's time for cooking very, very soon. So these are the ingredients that I used. A wooden cutting curl feathers that have been curled and this has been dipped in paraffin. So that's a sure way of uh, getting it going. Well, they can be temperamental actually, depends on whether the paraffin's sort of like evaporated. Then we've got the makeup pad, scrape that and then you'll get like a fluff. So that'll catch a spark very, very easily. And then I also used part of a um, petrol block. So these are doused in uh, sort of like paraffin as well. And uh, they're commonly used in the army, the military, to uh, get a little fire going. So, them are the ingredients, guys. Very quick, very easy, very simple. Uh, especially when you're in these type of conditions where it's very wet, it's been very windy, very dank, and um, you want to get a fire going quickly with the least amount of fuss. It's still raining, and raining hard. Um, but yeah, we have success. Um, a slightly different twist to making a fire, but there you go. A fire is a fire. We've got warmth. We've got some uh, water on the go there. And a uh, little badge here. She's nice and warm and enjoying this fire. Uh, so guys, that's, well, goodbye from me. It's goodbye from him. See you later. See you later, guys. You take care. Remember, be prepared. See you on the next one. Ciao for now. Badgie. Are you comfy? Are you comfy there, Badge? Are you comfy in Pappy's seat? Eh? You're quite happy there, aren't you, girl? Nice and warm. Coming to you from out in the bush, we have what's called Fireball Cinnamon Whiskey. Oh man, that is, that is, oh, that's that insect. it is just, it's superb. Fine, fine liqueur. You can see, 
It looks like um, a sample bottle. <laughs> That's what they are. That's what we sampled last week. It's a sample bottle in the sense of for yes, beer and the breweries, not for anything else. But that is absolutely outstanding. You can see the fireball inside. certainly warms up the cockles. We've got steaks on the go. We've got rice, brown rice, whole grain rice. They're cooking in the pot. And we've got this fireball cinnamon whiskey over from Canada that just warms up the heart and warms up the soul. And it complements a nice night out in the forest with friends. It's fantastic guys. I highly recommend it. One man deserves a smooth, tasty, cinnamony type of drink like this at the end of a hard day's slog and a hard day's bit of bushcraft in the field. As you can see guys, the fireball, it lives, it holds the fire within. Fireball, cinnamon whiskey, a real man's drink. Coming to you from Holtz's Brewery, the greatest brewery possibly in the North West. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> One man is about to consume the liquor of a lifetime. A real man's drink. Joseph Holtz, you picked a good one there, let me tell you. 